Now, if you remember when we discussed microscopes and telescopes, we talked about how wave optics limit the resolution of these devices, that rays are a simplification and waves get in the way. And we ran through this argument where we thought about light coming in the optical axis and some other light coming in slightly separated from that, both of these sources collimated, and then being focused down two spo spots just next to each other. And the size of these spots is little d, and d is Abbe's limit, and this comes about as a result of diffraction. And so anyway, we took this result and we found what the resolution limit is, and what it would be for f much, much larger than d, which is a valid approximation for a telescope, but not so good for a microscope. So that's what we did previously. Now I want to circle back and think about where Abbe's limit actually comes from. And it comes from a result of a diffraction argument. I'm going to present you a version of that argument now that is not 100% rigorous in that it doesn't give you a, a fully quantitative explanation of, of where it arises, but it gives you the flavor of how it works and how diffraction results in this limit. So we're going to think of a slightly contrived situation. The situation is two point sources right next to each other. And the goal is to try and figure out what is the separation between these two point sources. So you can imagine these are two stars in the sky or two molecules on a glass slide that are emitting and you're trying to decide whether you have one molecule or two or one star or two. But we're going to imagine a situation where these two radiating sources are emitting pi out of phase. So they're always emitting pi out of phase with each other. And in that case, you get a diffraction pattern like this. In particular, on the axis here, so these two sources are horizontally next to each other, on this axis right through the middle, you have destructive interference because the path length will be the same to each of the sources. Along these black lines, you have constructive interference. I'm going to call this the first constructive interference order. Now, if your goal is to try and determine whether this is one point or two points, you can say, well, and also how far away from each other they might be, you can say, well, can I determine the angle of this diffraction order? Because if I can, then I should be able to use this angle to figure out how far away my sources are from each other. Because I change the separation here, I change the angle. So here I'm making, in this direction, I'm making the separation smaller and smaller and smaller. This angle gets larger and larger and larger. Okay, so let's look at the mass of this. So I've got two point sources oscillating and, and uh, emitting pi out of phase. The waves are traveling off into the far field at this direction, theta. We're going to try and use theta to determine d. What are our equations here? Well, x, the path length difference between these two sources, is given by d sine theta. The constructive interference will occur when x is equal to m lambda plus lambda on 2. So this lambda on 2 gives you the pi phase shift that will give you the constructive interference between these two sources that are pi out of phase. So can you measure theta to find d? Well, for these black lines here where we have m equal to 0, that's the, the first time we get constructive interference, we have lambda on 2 must be equal to d sine theta, so we can find an equation for d. d is equal to lambda on 2 sine theta. So if you can measure this angle, you can find d. Well, that's great. So what happens if we then have a lens here that collects light that does not include this first order diffraction. So let's imagine we only collect light from some limited cone that does not include this first order diffraction. In that case then here your lens will not collect the information that tells you how far these sources are away from each other. So you need a lens that's big enough to collect these diffraction orders in order to determine the separation. If you take the limit where these sources now get closer and closer together until they are separated by exactly half a wavelength, in this case now the constructed interference occurs along this line. Because they're separated by half a wavelength, so the constructive interference occurs exactly horizontally here. Well, you make them any closer, and the pattern you get now basically isn't going to tell you anything about the separation. So I can't collect I can put I can't put a lens in front of this source here and figure out separation because there's no first order diffraction anymore, it's gone away. So I need my sources to be a certain width apart before I can even contemplate putting a lens here to collect this information. And furthermore, if my lens isn't big enough to collect it, then I won't see it either. So 
This equation here is the equation for Abbe's limit, d is equal to lambda on 2 sine theta. It's saying the separation between the sources is given by this angle. And the separation, if theta exists, this separation must also be bounded above lambda on 2. So I've given the argument about if you've got these two sources, what the diffraction order looks like. In order to think about the resolution of imaging, you're actually running this whole argument backwards. You're collecting light that's coming, say, from two stars off in the distance, and you're focusing it down onto some imaging plane, onto a CCD, and trying to figure out whether you've got one spot or two. So you just run all of the light backwards and say, you know, is my lens collecting enough light in order to focus down here to make a single blob, which would be the case if my lens is not big enough to collect this first order diffraction. But if I make my lens big enough here, then when I focus down, I'll get two spots that I can then resolve. So this is where Abbe's limit comes from. It's to do with diffraction. And like I said, this is not a fully rigorous argument because we're considering two sources here that are emitting coherently pi out of phase, whereas in fact we have two stars that they're not going to have any particular phase relationship. But you can imagine extracting the parts of the light that do. And so this is ultimately where the Abbe diffraction limit comes from.